Hi there, Stephanie here. I hear a lot of questions and confusion around the differences between universal screening assessments and diagnostic assessment. And a lot of questions about when would you use a diagnostic assessment? So in other videos, I've gone into much more detail about the difference between screening and diagnostic. Uh, but let me start with just a quick rundown of that. And then I'll give you a couple of scenarios when you probably do need a diagnostic related to reading or spelling and when you can probably go without. Um, so screening assessments um, predict risk and they identify risk within systems. So uh, which students and systems are at risk. Universal screening is typically done three times a year, uh, testing all students with the same measures. Hopefully those are indicators of the essential early literacy skills. Hopefully those are predictive of reading comprehension in the future. Hopefully they're standardized and um, uh, reliable and valid. Um, hopefully there's some kind of a benchmark goal or cut point for risk that helps you make decisions. So those are criteria for universal screeners. Diagnostic assessments are a completely different category. So the tools that you would select for screening are not the same ones you would use for diagnostic assessment. Uh, and what makes this tricky is that even the people who write these tools sometimes use the wrong terminology. So more on that in a minute. Uh, diagnostic assessments are completely different from screeners because they answer different questions. They tell you exactly what to teach tomorrow. So diagnostic assessment will not be brief. It is not repeated across the year. It's not capable of measuring growth. It's typically in-depth assessment in a single skill area. Uh, it's often untimed. It is uh, sometimes standardized, sometimes not, but not informal. It's not something that teachers create. The most important criteria to look for in diagnostic assessments is that they are very, very tightly linked to instruction. A diagnostic should tell you exactly what to teach tomorrow. So I often say that screening will put you in the ballpark of where the student's needs are and diagnostic assessment should tell you the uh, row number and seat number within the ballpark, like very, very specific. So universal screening will tell you that a student needs instructional support. Diagnostic assessment will tell you what the student needs support on. In some cases, you probably don't need a diagnostic. Screening will tell you everything you need to know. So I'm thinking especially about young children, kindergarten students. If you have good screening measures on phonemic awareness, alphabet knowledge, on um, letter sound and, and basic decoding, you kind of have assessments of everything you need just from screening. I don't know that you need a diagnostic assessment. If a student can't segment phonemes, you should teach segmentation of phonemes. If a student can't match sound to letter, you should teach letter sound relationships and how to read and spell basic CV or VC and CVC words. You don't need a diagnostic assessment to tell you to do that. And you probably don't even know need to know which letter sounds a student knows and doesn't know because you should be teaching based on a well-planned scope and sequence. So you're going to teach letter sounds that allow students to build words, allow them to read words. The order that you teach the letter sounds in should allow the student to read and spell words right away. So that's just my thinking about the um, lack of a need for a diagnostic in uh, kindergarten, um, probably even into the beginning of first grade. One of the times when you will need a diagnostic is when you have students, let's say at the middle of first grade, who are okay on basic decoding, no problem reading CVC words, but when you give them connected text, they don't read accurately. This could happen middle of first grade, end of first grade, beginning of second grade. That's a pattern that really indicates the need for a diagnostic decoding assessment because the student can read CVC words, but they're not reading some kind of patterns that are in that connected text. So a diagnostic decoding assessment will tell you exactly which patterns they know and don't know. Another scenario where you would need a diagnostic would be um, 
let's say middle of second or middle of first grade and older students who are accurate and fluent readers and you would expect that they're understanding what they're reading but if you give a retell after oral reading fluency or you give a maze assessment uh, you might find the student is in fact not understanding what they're reading so that's a really good time to give a diagnostic like the Acadians reading diagnostic for comprehension, fluency, and oral language. So a student who's struggling with reading comprehension, but it's not because of word recognition, it's something in the language comprehension realm, uh, that's when you need a diagnostic. And maybe even with younger students, uh, if you have no concerns about their word recognition skills on screening, but there's something about their ability to follow directions or their general word knowledge or uh, their use of, of morphemes that is concerning, you might want a language comprehension diagnostic in that case as well. So that gives you a couple of scenarios to think about when you might use a, a diagnostic, how it's different from a screener, and uh, when you might not need a diagnostic. Keep in mind that sometimes tests are named diagnostic when they're really screeners and vice versa. They might have the term screening in it, but the intention is diagnostic assessment. I'm thinking of the quick phonics screener, has the word screener in it, but it's a diagnostic. I love 95% groups uh, PSI, the phonics screener for intervention. It's not a screener, it's a diagnostic right? Uh, the past, the S in the, in the word past is screener, but it's a diagnostic assessment. It's not designed for screening. Um, trying to think if it ever goes the other way. Do they use diagnostic? Well, in Ohio, where I live, uh, our legislation requires diagnostic assessment three times a year, but what they really mean is screening. So you have to be really alert to uh, the differences and um, making decisions so that you are answering questions that you have with assessment tools, but not doing more assessment than is absolutely necessary.